What's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Axial just released the new LCXU DIG conversion kit for the Axial Basecamp transmission. So we're going to breathe new life into my Basecamp project that I've got here. We're going to get this thing installed with a new DIG unit from Axial. We're going to go hit the rocks and see how it performs. But first, we got to get this installed. So let's take a look at how we do that. We're going to go ahead and start by removing the screws from the bottom side of the skid plate and remove the transmission. Next, we're going to pull the pins that hold the drive shaft to the outputs of the transmission, and out comes the entire transmission. Right here, we're taking off the rear cover of the transmission casing, and as you pull this apart, you're going to find your gears and bearings inside. Remove the lower output gear, and we're going to replace it with the new dig unit output gear taking the output shaft and screwing it into the gear itself, being sure to use a touch of Loctite because you don't want to have to come back for this later. Install the correct bearings on the face of the dig unit, the opposing bearing for the output shaft, and then a small bearing for the slide dog to ride on internally. This can now go back into the transmission case and the back side of the transmission case can snap into place. Now we are assembling the top three screws for that rear case. I've laid out everything here so you can kind of see what the dig unit entails and kind of put it down on the table just like how the exploded view is. This little slide dog right here is not directional so it doesn't matter which direction it goes onto this and there is a machined relief cut for an e-clip right here. E-clips are notorious for flying all around my room so be careful when installing. This is the slide dog for the dig and the slide dog should freely move forward and back when installed into the transmission. Go ahead and install the bearing on your output shaft for the rear before putting in your metal lock plate. Because it's metal, we're going to use a touch of Loctite when installing the screws into that lock plate. That is what will lock your rear tires when the dig is engaged. You can now put the rear plastic housing on the back side of the transmission, snapping it all into place and making sure that our dig is free to rotate. I use needle nose pliers and grab that output shaft and then thread on that rod end and then I can use an allen wrench to help tighten all the way down. Right here we're looking at spinning the spur gear and by pulling the dig unit slide out or in it will engage or disengage dig. Installing the screws on the bottom side of the output case. And now we are installing the screw for the slide shift servo mechanism for the dig unit. You have two servo horn options here. One of them is 23 tooth and one of them is 25 tooth, so choose accordingly. Now we're installing the plastic servo mount onto the metal servo plate. Now we are installing our servo saver onto our servo. The instructions in this dig unit are very clear and it was very easy to follow along. Hopefully some visual representation helps answer some questions for you guys. Now we've got the servo mounted, we can put the top plate onto the transmission and bolt it into place. Now we're going to verify that our dig is working, watching the output shaft on the transmission when shifting back and forth. Now it's time to replace your motor, go ahead and put that in there, get your pinion set, and now we're going to use the different drive shaft sections that were supplied with the dig unit to shorten the rear drive shaft because with the dig unit added to the transmission, it has added length, so you need to shorten your rear drive shaft, otherwise it will bind and your truck will not operate correctly. Use a little bit of thread lock on those screws because they are going into metal, and then you can reassemble your rear drive shaft and now you're ready for the trail. All right guys, we are out here on the trail. Before we get crawling though, I would definitely want to highlight something really important so that you don't burn up your dig servo almost immediately. You have to set endpoints on your controller. Typically, controllers will move your servo 100% of the range one way, and then you click the button and it will move it 100% of the range the other way. Usually, you need like 30% of the travel, so you gotta turn it way down so that the servo doesn't try and go 100%, but the dig unit will lock out just because it physically can't move that far, 
uh, the same range as your servo. So it's gonna sit there trying to force it to go and try and open it more. And if it's sitting there trying to pull on that the whole time, it's going to heat up and kill your servo. So be sure to set your endpoints. I don't know what controller you're using, so you may want to get on and check a YouTube video on how to set endpoints for that channel on your controller. That would be my strongest advice for you guys so that you don't end up burning up your servos immediately. But here is my base camp. This one has been converted to straight axles. This is not the 10.3 Builders Kit. This is a new release from Axial. This one was actually an original base camp. It came as a blue truck and ended up taking the portals out of it and putting these straight axles on this one. Uh, I've got a Proline body on here. We've got a Vanquish bed cage that I grafted onto the body. And then this truck also has some Rock Pirates goodies as well. We've got shock towers in the front and the rear got their metal sliders and a battery tray. It also has a brushless motor and ESC system in there. And then we've got a Reefs Raw 500 steering servo. And then I actually changed out my shift servo in there to a Reefs Smart 179. So lots of power to get that thing shifted in and out. And it's very quick and snappy. It's gonna be perfect for a dig unit. All right, now this is my first outing with this truck and it's geared just a little tall because it started out as a portal truck and I never changed the transmission gears to reduce the, uh, the gear ratio so that it would actually crawl a little better. So it might be a little jumpy, that's all right. And I also don't have any weights at all or overdrive in the truck. So, you know, it's pretty basic base camp we've got here. Well, let's cruise around some rocks and I'll show you guys how I like to utilize the dig function out here in my SCX 10.3 LCXU transmission with a dig unit. All right, so first off, I've set my steering servo up to give me maximum steering available in these AR45 straight axles. So if I just turn left, and then we try and turn the truck as sharp as we can, it does turn around reasonably quick with a decent steering radius. However, we ended up falling off this ledge over here. So let's bring this back around. And number one best use of dig is just to tighten up your turn radius. So there we go, we're gonna line it back up again. And then let's go ahead and then dig, engage dig. You can hear that little click. And then you'll hear the physical gears lock up. Now check out the turning radius on that. It literally pivoted on that back left tire. There she goes. And then I'm gonna disengage dig. Sometimes you have to bump it in reverse just a touch to get rid of the uh, binding in the drivetrain. And there she goes. Now the next demonstration for the dig unit here is uh, to help correct your line if you get your tires in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna intentionally drop this driver tire down into the bottom of this crack. Now, of course, we're gonna end up on our side here, scratching up our brand new body, and the truck doesn't really wanna go up like this, right? So if we can't get it to bring up in this kind of orientation, what we can do is we can engage dig in the front. There it goes, it engaged. Now our rears are locked, so it's gonna help us uh, keep our rear tires where we want on the line, and then it's gonna allow us to adjust where our front tires are. So you can see front tires only spinning. Now if we turn into that low side wall, we're gonna get this truck balanced. Now we're gonna bring it up, and then you can slow down a little bit if you want. You can turn it sharper or less sharp. Now when doing something like that, you can also really get a ton of traction on that tire. So you can watch that sidewall on the left tire there, and it really starts to wrinkle up. That's because there's a ton of traction there. So if we grab four wheel drive now, disengage the dig, it's got a lot of traction and it's gonna help pull that truck uphill. So it didn't work there. Let's try it one more time. Let's get our front tire to really get a bite here. And there it goes. So sometimes the drivetrain will be in too much of a bind to get four wheel drive and uh, that dig unit will need to, you'll have to give it a small reverse to take the bind off the drivetrain so that it will be able to shift. I have a servo saver in there, so it's probably just too much of a bind for that servo saver to allow the servo to shift, which you can tighten and loosen that servo saver to give you more or less pressure on your dig unit. Right here, I've gone up and around a big scary obstacle. So what we're gonna do is turn and pivot on that left tire 
get me lined up for a drop. Now this is another place where dig units work really well is going down obstacles. So it uses like a rear brake and then your bumper can save you too. There we go. Went down a very steep hill. It did start to slide a little bit. That's all right. You guys get the idea, right? Turn on your rear brake so that the car stays stretched out and planted as you're going down big obstacles. Let's grab dig here and just turn it around. Pretty fun little truck we've got here. Now I refer to different things you can use on your truck as tools in your toolbox. So I like having dig as an option in the toolbox. Different ways to attack and try to work through obstacles, right? Pretty cool. There's a lot of awesome ways you can use dig to your advantage and just being able to lock up those rears can be a big benefit as well as getting maximum control, maximum control on your truck. Well guys, I hope this video really helped you get your dig unit installed and learn how to use it out here on the trail. I will leave links down to those products in the description below. I will add as many affiliate links as possible to all the things that are on this specific truck. In case you like some of these parts, you can get them set up on your rig. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.